Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we're talking about the Daniel Cohn debacle that keeps getting crazier. Now we've got even more proof from like, I guess, some guy named Michael something that was like her manager or something. Crazy what's going on. Um, we're going to go down that path a little bit. He reveals a lot of things we already kind of knew, but people kind of just gloss over and don't talk about it. And so he's been put into a corner and now he's spilling the tea. You know, we don't do a lot of tea here, but it's kind of imperative in this style of case because this is a YouTube influencer who is 15, who's telling everybody she's 16 or 17 or 18 or whatever the case may be, is basically with a 19 year old, which is highly illegal, by the way, everybody. And that all of this is perpetuated by her mother, Jennifer Cohn. So we're going to do that. I went to Canada's Wonderland today. Could you tell? I, did, I wore sunglasses. Got burnt. I'm not dancing. I am burnt and I need a shower. So I'm gonna do quickly do this video, but we're gonna I'm gonna spin just because, but I'm just gonna I can't dance, I'm sorry. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Burnt. Donna Watton. Watton? 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 Come on, get me something good here. I'm burnt crispy. Look at this. Holy keychain. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, let's go to the YouTubers. <sighs> I hate being burnt. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Like the heat coming off my face right now. Terry, come on, win something. The heat, like if you put your hand, you could roast marshmallows off my forehead right now. I'm not gonna lie. Another freaking keychain. I'm gonna take one of the keychains off. There's too many people winning keychains. I'm removing it. So are you, oh, is this, yeah, so you want a keychain? Let's, let's do this. So before we get into this tea or whatever you guys want to call it, it's it's tea for the sake of exposing the shittiness on YouTube and how crazy it is that there are teenage girls living like this. So Michael Weist is, I think, a manager. <laughs> I wish I knew more. Michael Weist was born July 25th, 1996. He's an American entrepreneur, record executive, talent manager, and producer. That makes sense. So he's, he's a talent manager. I mean... Daniel Cohn, and I know she's just young, has no talent. Like these people who, all these YouTube influencers who try to put out like music, piss me off. Because there's a lot of people out there putting really great music out there. And these are the people who get all the plays and the views, Logan Paul, Daniel Cohn, and they're the ones who get views. Their music is absolute and utter bollocks. It is not good. Trisha Paytas? Who are these? Stick, stay in your lane. Let musicians do what they're going to do. Please stop making music if you can't. If you can't sing, stop it. Okay? If you can't do any of that stuff and you know you can't, don't do it. It's like, basically, it's not cultural appropriation, but it's like cultural appropriation. It's like musical appropriation. If you can't do it, stop it. And it makes me angry. Anyway. I'm not saying what this guy does is right, because clearly not. He is likely one of the main reasons Daniel Cohn is who she is. So I'm not saying he's in the right at all. But my, the enemy of my enemy is my friend at this point. He's going to spill some tea and he's going to talk about it. But it cannot be denied that Michael Weist was, is just as bad for putting someone like this in the spotlight. Unless he didn't know her age. And I'm pretty sure he did. He represents Bryce Hall. Hmm. <laughs> So he just represents the douchiest of YouTube. That's great. I again, I don't. I think all of these YouTube influencers who have nothing positive to give the world should be forgotten. We need to go into. CC Suarez is doing a series on this. I think I might piggyback and do some with her about just influencers in general. She's doing one on like bad influencers and just in general. Let's just talk about them and how shitty they are. Their content is shitty. Their behavior is lots of times shitty, and they are influencing our children. Okay, we need to talk about it. So guys like this are the reason they're there. 
So this guy, like, I know he's given us some stuff to talk about, but he is just as bad. He is the perpetual, he is the behind the scenes person that puts us up. Daniel Cohn's excuse is that her mother did it, but he's also a part of this. Let's get into this video. This is could be a, this is probably going to be multiple videos just because it's, this is drama. This is unfortunate YouTube drama. And unfortunately, the only thing that's going to come from this is they all are going to win, right? But I think that he's done some exposing here that they're going to have a hard time coming back from. And in the end, the only way Daniel Cohn wins, and you guys hear me out, the only way she wins, like, which means the only way she comes out from this alive, basically, is if all of her sponsors get taken away and Jennifer is not allowed to exploit her anymore. That is the only way Daniel Cohn wins. I am under the impression, I'm going to say, the statement I'm going to make right now is that Daniel Cohn is too far gone at this point. That's what I'm saying. Too far gone. And we're going to show you in a minute. Anyway, let's get to this. An official statement from Michael Weist. So I wanted to make this video because I have always been silent about every single time that I am accused of something or every time someone attacks me or tries to use my name. I've always been silent and handled it um, professionally through my attorneys or, you know, privately. Uh, however, to say the least, I'm over it. I'm tired of being attacked and not standing up for myself. Um, so I'm making this video not only to clear... Uh, also, I don't know. <laughs> you guys need to know, there's just, obviously, there's beef. And so what they do, the same thing with going on with Trisha Paytas and Ethan Klein right now and Def Noodles and Keemstar. I, like, I'm not really in that world, but I sort of on the fringes of that world and trying to understand it. But holy shit, there is so much drama going on right now. And I'm not sure any of it's, I hope it's not manufactured because manufactured drama pisses me off. But there is so much going on. So when there's beef, what do these people do? They go right to the internet and they lay it all out there. And that's, that's kind of the way this goes, beef in the streets on YouTube. You use it and everybody gets rich from it, by the way, just so you're aware. So I, I, I want to say this is real because watch what he said. These accusations, but to give some background into um, the situation and considering that this is my official statement regarding my former client, Danielle Cohn. Um, so to start, I guess I'd like to give some background on everything that I have done for Danielle um, and her family. and. It's rather shocking, I suppose. Um, I spent about $50,000 on them, paying for her birthday dinner at BOA um, for an entire table. $50,000 for dinner? Dude, I'm sorry to tell you this. That's your own fault for going there. You ever had a Chick-fil-A? You ever just gone to somewhere a little cheaper? 50000 Why do rich people do this? Why are there restaurants where it costs $50,000 to eat food? Is it really that much better than like Olive Garden? Is it really? Just, is it? Maybe it is. I don't know. I've never eaten at an expensive restaurant. Um, paying for party buses. I paid for the cars in Florida when they moved from Florida back to LA. I heavily discounted all the music videos that I produced for her, which I have yet to been paid for. Um, and I went above and beyond for Danielle. Um, I did all her distribution for her music videos on platforms what? and partners that, that she has never worked with before, such as her Vivo channel, Apple Music, you know, so on and so forth. I'm gonna stop you there. Again, I'm not, I'm not, this is not me staying over Daniel Cohn. I know he's gonna drop some stuff, but distribution? Have you ever heard of DistroKid? Guys, distribution of music and podcasts now is literally the easiest thing in the entire world. I go to DistroKid. If I want to release my records, I go to DistroKid. I think I pay 35 bucks a year or something, and they distribute that shit on every platform for me. I'm not saying that they didn't do it differently or what. I don't know what they did. I'm just saying, okay. <laughs> like you could, Daniel Cohn can be able to, should be able to do this shit by herself with one account and 30 bucks. It really is weird that these people, it's because they pay people to do this because they don't know how to do it themselves. And then these people will be like, oh, you know, it's big five, $10,000 to this. It's no, it's not. It's so easy to get your music on platforms now, even covers of music. Um, and really kind of helped her elevate her music videos and do what she wanted to do. Um, you know, I went, this girl and I were, were like family for a while. Um, we went to Disney World together. Um, we went on multiple dinners in LA, um, all of which I paid for. Um, and 
many more things I shouldn't have had to pay for. Jen, for example, had asked me to get me a Suburban in LA, so I paid for the Suburban. You bought them vehicles? Holy shit. Where is Jen's money? Jen make Jen and Daniel Cohn make millions of dollars on these social media platforms. Millions of dollars, okay? Why aren't they paying for their own shit? I can't stop. I'm sorry. So that they could put packages in it and such to move it back to LA. I had staff helping. Are you telling me you bought them a truck instead of just paying movers to do some shit? Sounds right. Okay. Pack up their house for them. I had really been there with them um, through a lot. Um, but to preface that, I had started working with Danielle because I invited her to a... I've known Danielle for years, minus. I mean, I've known Danielle for... Since she was a very young child, um, and most of my career in this industry, um, you know, I had invited her to a yacht party event in uh, Miami area. Again, I know this sounds weird. I'm sounds like I'm standing up, standing up for Daniel Cohen, but I'm not. Why are the people in Danielle's life, like this guy and her mother, inviting a t young teenage girls? To yacht parties and dinners with the booze. What? She he's saying she he knows her since she's young. She's only 15 now. My son just turned 15 today. Happy birthday, Tristan. Just today he turned 15. He's not going to yacht parties and getting tattoos all over his body and like doing videos and lingerie and all that. He wouldn't anyway, he would never allow it. But holy shit, listen to this. She's living like an adult as a young, very young girl. Mm, the people that are exploiting her and this guy is one of them again The enemy of my enemy is my friend, but we cannot forget this guy is the catalyst maybe uh, behind Daniel Cohn and You know we hit it off. It's been a while since we've seen each other So we were just having a good time talking business Mikey Tua actually invited me to their Florida house for a while So I stayed there uh, and we started filming a documentary um, called obsessed as well as working on a couple other projects um, wow. and Long story short, I eventually go back to Los Angeles. We had started filming the documentary. Um, after getting to know Danielle and Jen at a much closer level, I stopped filming this documentary um, because it got really, really dark and scary and I felt uncomfortable. Um, so Danielle had asked me to come to their Los Angeles house several times, um, even when I didn't really- That he's gonna leave that there? You're doing a documentary and it got really dark? How so? Why? What? You can't just drop that shit. If they were in Florida too at the time, it's something which tells me she's 12 or 13 at that time. They're filming a documentary with a 12 or 13 year old girl Instagram influencer who wears bikinis on Instagram as a 12 year old, by the way, everybody. And it gets dark. You didn't see that coming. Again, I don't know what Michael knew, but he had to know she wasn't the age she said she was. He literally says he'd known her since she was really young. What is happening here? Like, want to. I stayed there because I didn't know what the situation was or. You know, I wanted to be helpful. So as I had spent time with, with Jen and Danielle, I've gotten to learn their family, their family dynamic, and much more information that I did not know previously. Okay. Um, and, you know, it started to be uh, very uncomfortable for me watching Jen, um, her mother, taking advantage of her. Danielle had told me at one point she had $300,000 in her bank account, and then um, a couple months later had less than 10000 which is concerning for Danielle. See, this is the shit we need to talk about. Shit, this is crazy. First of all, this is the problem with no protections in place for young influencers on the internet in general, not just YouTube. This is young influencers in general. If he's right about this, and it, he didn't say allegedly, so maybe they'll sue him, I don't know. But if he's right about this, Danielle Cohn had 300,000, all of a sudden had 10,000. Where did you spend $290,000, Jen? On what? Like, I get it, you guys are f doing vacations and shit. Did she buy a home? Where'd that money go? This is the problem, everybody. And you don't think that this is dangerous, that a family vlogger has all this money, they put it aside for their kids, right? Let's say Jess Fam does this, right? All of a sudden, what happens if their channel tanks? Or they get canceled. Something happens, okay? Do you not think they're going to just dip into those kids' counts and take that money out? You don't think that's going to happen? It's going to happen. So this is, again, a conversation for kid fluencers in general. But in this case, holy shit, that's a pretty big allegation. Um, and obviously I wanted to protect her because I love her and, and was there for her. Um, 
when I was in LA staying at Danny's house, um, we were out somewhere in Los Angeles at a mall, I believe, or getting lunch. Um, and her and her mom were in a big argument. Again, I was feeling very uncomfortable and um, felt put in the middle because Jin would text me, what is, what is Danny doing? Danny would be, don't tell my mom anything. It made me feel very uncomfortable to say the least. Um, yes, because, and it should have, Michael, you're smart to feel uncomfortable because she's a minor and it looks like you're an adult. I'm not saying there's anything going on inappropriately, but Jen can use that leverage and say, my daughter who is a minor is out with this adult and they don't know where they are and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he is. When you get into this world, this, okay, if you actually understood the world that they live in, this Hollywood influencer world, it is probably one of the most disgusting, dark places. And I don't know because I've never lived it, but I had friends who did live in Hollywood. Hollywood is a freaking cesspit of disgusting people. Okay. It's gross. Okay. And if you think about this for a second, this world that they live in, it sounds like Dan, Danny and her mom are always in massive fights. They're always butting heads. If she had her money stolen, she doesn't want people telling where she is. There is going to be a massive, huge falling out between Danny and her mother. Some, her mother has got something on her, some dirt of some kind, or is holding her boyfriend's at ho hostage, for lack of a better term, like to say, look, if you guys screw me over, you're going to jail, boyfriend who impregnated my 13 year old daughter like these people like mikey too i guess her ex-boyfriend we talked about this before jen made her daughter do a video on her a on her termination it was the most scary and heartbreaking thing i've ever seen in my life okay and jen made her do that okay there are men in daniel's life men not teenagers okay they're men who are impregnating a 13 year old girl and getting away with it nobody seems to give a shit what is wrong with this world? Why do the elites and people with money get away with shit? I don't get it. I'm, and again, I'm pretty sure that Jennifer holds everybody and has dirt on all the people around her. And if she ever gets double crossed, everybody's going to go down with her. Eventually, Danielle pulls me aside while we're out um, and tells me that she needs to talk to me and tells me her real age. Um, and okay, so I'm going to retract what I said before. He didn't know her real age. Okay. She says that if I need to, you know, do business with her, I need to know her real age, blah, blah, blah. She tells me that she is 16 years old, um, to which, you know, w was concerning because we had had this conversation about when she turns 18, what is she going to do? Oh, I would love to know what the hell that conversation is going to be, but we all know. Thank God OnlyFans is changing its platforms. But... Again, she lied. He said she's 16. She's not even 16 now, everybody. She just turned 15. She's not. So she's lying then too. She and legally, that's crazy because she does advertisements for companies um, like Bang Energy Drinks. That is one of the most disgusting companies. They're they're. I mean, they're disgusting in the fact that they use minors to to, to, to sell their 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 shitty drinks to people. Buy energy. If you buy Bang Energy, stop buying Bang Energy. Okay, they use minors to sell their and minors in bikinis to sell their drinks. Are you really gonna crack open a Bang Energy and be like, I'm so glad that these people give money to minors who dress in bikinis again i would there he's not saying everything he needs to be saying he told me that she is, is 16 uh, and had just turned 16 um and asked me to speak to jen so that we could get access to danny's emails because at the time what? jen was handling all of danielle's brand deals and such um so she had actually had me go in the room with her and her mom and I, I felt very uncomfortable uh i kept saying this is not my place this is you know i'm here because danielle has asked me to speak to you guys about this to which danny cried i felt like a therapist more than a manager to say the least um to add on uh, I just wanted to kind of give some more context into some specific things. Thank you. While I was in LA with, with Jen and, and Danny, and while I was in Florida, and we were filming the documentary here in Florida, I had begun to notice a pattern of behavior that was really not healthy. Um, Are you, you think? <laughs> did, it, did the red flags not happen when they're like, hey, this mom is absolutely exploiting her underage daughter in lingerie on Instagram. You didn't, that didn't strike you then? What? And when she told you she was 16, she's a minor still, even though she was lying about that too. That didn't strike, there was no, again, I understand that this guy's in full defense mode and I get it. And he's also in like offense mode understood i get what the i get the play here i understand it but these red flags didn't pop up earlier 
and saying things like, you should wear this bikini pic, or you should post this ass pic, or you should do this, essentially pimping out her daughter. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel very uncomfortable. You think, bruh? I think Daniel looks so cute with a nose done. Yeah, that would be cute. But she won't do it. I already have like 12 piercings on my ears. So Jen's like, she looks so cute with a nose stud. I want to point out everybody, and I did a video on this before, and, and some people get mad at me because I posted a picture that someone sent me of Danielle Cohn, who has a tattoo between her cleavage when she was 14 years old, okay? A lot of people are like, oh, Josh zoomed in on her boobs and posted it. No, I didn't. And you guys need to stop telling lies because it's slander. So I posted it. So we have to find out who this tattoo artist was. I found out who the tattoo artist was. I did a video about that tattoo artist. Then she did a video and said, no, no, it wasn't me. Can't prove it anyway. Because apparently she can get the tattoos in Florida legally if her mother says yes but not california and we all know she got most of the tattoos in california by this crazy artist by this one that smokes tons of weed and does and we literally have her tattooing i think tua the her ex-boyfriend so that was the whole story you guys have to understand something she is i think 15 now but at the time she got most of her tattoos she was 14 maybe even 13. she is almost covered head to toe in tattoos by now and she's not even 16 yet if that again if you guys are more worried about a picture that i show that someone gave me than the fact that there's a 14 year old covered in tattoos and piercings that her mother is forcing her to get, you're on the wrong side of history here. Okay. You guys all miss the point when you talk about the other shit. This is what matters. Daniel Cohn is the victim here, not the perpetrator. I'm not coming after Daniel Cohn. I'm coming after her mother and those in her periphery that take advantage of her. And it's a whole effing team of people, including this guy. She went to get her, her tongue pierced with Desiree and they were supposed yeah. to be mad. Tongue pierced at 14. And then she wanted to get her. This is her mom. Is that a mother, anybody? Tell, ask, answer me this question. Is that a mother or is that a disgusting predator? Who lets their 14 year old get their tongue pierced? And if you've done that, I'm going to judge you as a parent. Don't do that. Do you know what tongue piercings are for? Okay. Jennifer is salivating at the moment that Danielle turns 18 because their career, her career is going to go boom because she's going to do the adult stuff. And her mother, and again, Danielle Cohn, she's the one being groomed to do this. Her mother's the one making the money. If he's right, if Michael's right that she took $290,000 from her daughter, let's be real though. All of the millions of dollars that they have had and gone through their life, all of it is Danielle Cohn's. None of it is Jennifer's. Daniel Cohn is the talent. She's the talent. She's the one that's taking the picture. She's the one out there. She's the one that adult men are coming to look at. She's the one that people are looking at. She's the influencer. Jennifer's behind the scenes. But Jennifer, where's all the money? Where did it go? This story is crazy. So she got, got her cartilage. When I got my industrial done, the lady said that, um, cause I was ready, remember? I went up there and I was like, oh yeah, let's get mine done now. And she was like, no, like I don't think it's a good idea. There were times in which she would say, oh, if you wouldn't have aborted your daughter, you would be on 16 and pregnant. Um, I felt very, very uncomfortable. He just said that Jen said, if you hadn't terminated your daughter, you'd be on 16 and pregnant. Didn't her... Oh my gosh. This just keeps getting crazier because we assumed that Jen made her do it. But it sounds like Danielle went and did it. And then Jen made her make a video about it. Guys, I, there's no other videos you need to see or understand about anything about this case except for that video where Daniel Cohn sits in front of a, on a bed with her mom behind the camera and talks about her termination at 13 years old, impregnated by an 18 year old boy. Okay. There's no other video. There's nothing else I need to say. There's no other arguments, tattoos, inappropriate photos, money stolen. I don't need to say any of that other shit. All you need to see is that video. That is the most insane thing I have ever seen pro-life pro-abortion pro-whatever it doesn't matter what you believe that didn't have to happen you didn't have to make millions of dollars off that video either that had millions of hits by the way I'm I, I can't believe of all the people we talk about Piper Raquel and Daniel Cohn they get away their parents get away with all this the CPS has done nothing to these two girls who have been groomed and have been taken advantage of and exploited their whole entire life. Where is CPS? Please, somebody in California who works for CPS, please tell me what justification CPS has of not taking these children out of their 
parents care. Please, I'd love to hear the explanation. Love to hear it. It's because they're rich and they can hire lawyers. It's crazy that poor people who can't hire lawyers will get their kids taken away for probably lesser offenses. And maybe they should, right? But at the same time, when you have money, you live by a different set of rules. And CPS can do nothing. And then this is what happens. Heck. Jin would get phone calls and scream. Uh, I think we have a clip of Jin literally screaming about a lawsuit that they were getting. So this guy has footage from this documentary he was making that none of us have seen that he has. This shit is going to blow up. Again, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. This guy has the ability to take every shit thing he did by putting these influencers in public and helping them do that. And now has the opportunity and he should take this opportunity to bring Jennifer Cohn down. He should take this opportunity, and that's why I'm covering this, and that's kind of why I'm on the side on this. He has the opportunity right now to bring her down because he has some dirt, and you know he does. Um, and while I was having fun in the beginning, it became very dark and very clear that, that Jen was abusing her daughter, yep. Danielle, yes. which made me very concerned uh, and was a cause of action for me talking to Danielle about it and, and the reason she asked me to take over her emails and, and help out in a way so that, that Jen did not have that authority. I was concerned before I knew Danielle's real age that she he keeps on with this email. This email thing is important. Obviously Jennifer has control over Danielle's emails and does everything for her. And, D and Danielle clearly wanted access to her emails to be able to take control of her own career. Maybe. And Jennifer will not. Jennifer has everybody by the balls right now. And I be, and I'm going to, again, I will reiterate why. I honestly believe that she has dirt on people and she just wants control because once Danielle Cohn turns 18, Jennifer, she will leave. I mean, I can't believe she has been emancipated by now that there's not enough people in her life saying emancipate yourself. You can do that. Hire your own lawyers. Jen has so much control. Jen has so much dirt on people and she can put a lot of these boys in general, these men, adult men who have done things with her daughter. She can put them in jail. But here's the truth, everybody. They should be in jail, yes, but Jennifer Cohn should absolutely be in jail. She was going to turn 18 next year and have nothing to her name because her mother had taken it all. Um, and I wanted to help her, you know, establish and protect herself. Jen had been telling me that they had 30 CPS cases, all of which I now know why. Um, and it's 30 CP. Okay. Holy shit, everybody. You guys hearing this? There are 30 open CPS cases about... Daniel Cohn and CPS's hands are tied. 30 open cases, 30. Why can't a CPS or a judge or someone just look at these effing videos that they put out themselves? Look at her Instagram, go back to the point when she was 11 and see what they're posting. Why are they not allowed to do that? What is, what is going on in your legal system? I mean, every legal system, it's probably the same here. This is why we're fighting. This is why we snark. This is why we talk about this. Because there is no protections, nothing. This is why we talk about it. Rightfully so. Jen, what you are doing to your daughter is not okay. Um, if you guys are their fans, you should not allow Danielle to be treated that way by her mother. Mm -hmm. And it's despicable the way that you could treat your own daughter, Jen. Um, <laughs> you think? Dude, money talks, bullshit takes the long walk off the pier. Okay? That's the problem here. With, the, uh, with no protections for these children, money talks. They don't give a shit about their kids. They don't care. I've spoken to you about this privately, and nothing has yet to change. So I left LA immediately, returned to Nashville on July 4th, um, and spoke to my attorney um, and just kind of filled him in on everything and asked, you know, what to do after learning that Danielle was 16, which for it's the not record, true. Danielle's not 16. We Thank her you. Birth certificate and she's 15. So Yeah, she's 15 now. 2021, everybody. Now she's 15. Think about this. He is saying it. Her father has said it. Everybody knows it. But her fans and people are like, they don't want it. They don't care. They just don't care. And her fans are influenced by her. And her fans are her age or younger too. Okay? That is the danger here, everybody. 
I was I was literally in line today, Ken's Wonderland. There were a couple of Daniel Cohn type people in front of me, and I was scared. They couldn't be more than 13, 14 years old. F bombing and taking selfies, TikToks, and sending boyfriend. Like it was insane how young they were. My daughter's here with me, trying to distract her from this thing in front of us. They were bouncing, hitting us, and they were they were being a come uh, again. This is the type of person that they're influencing, and they apps kids. Are, <laughs> if you don't think that kids can be influenced, you're dumb. Kids are absolutely influenced. And they will change their behavior to be like these people. And if you don't see it, just go on TikTok for half a fucking hour. Okay, just go there for 10 minutes and watch. Shit, man. So whether she's 15 or 16, uh, she's a minor. And that concerned things when um, she was no longer about to be 18 and her mm -hmm. relationship with Mason had, you know, created some issues. Mason had gotten stopped on the way um to nashville for bringing a butterfly knife on a plane in which i actually got him out of that charge so mason's i guess her current boyfriend okay who brings a butter knife <laughs> butter knife a butterfly knife on an airplane they're like this long what in the f who is this dumb? This is the problem too with these rich kids and these people who are influencers. They honestly feel like they're above the law. They can do whatever they want. They can, and they do. A lot of them can, and that's the problem. What an idiot. And had my attorney take care of it. Um, and the first thing I did when I got to Nashville after the fourth was, was and had my attorney take care of it. Um, and the first thing I did when I got to Nashville after the fourth was, was call my attorney. You said he that. He advised me to distance myself from Danielle. Um, he said that Mason should stop seeing Danielle, and furthermore, Mason should have no contact with her, and definitely not a sexual or romantic relationship with a child. You think? And again, I will go back to this. Jennifer has made this all happen. It's similar to Piper Raquel. They bring these boys into the lie. They come into, they move into the house. She actually moved these kids into the house. I think it was Mikey Tua or one of the boys that their parents was like, no, I don't want them. And they all, they, she was teaching that kid how to emancipate from his parents so he could be part of that world. Okay. All of these parents are allowing this shit to happen, allowing their kids to be on TikTok and famous. Stop it. The money is not worth it. Okay. This kid, the new kid, she has that on him. He could go to jail for R and might as this is statutory. Yep. Um, yes, it is. I informed Mason of this and you know, nothing seemed to change even though he said, Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Uh, Mason knows again. Mason's likely 18 or 19 dating a 15 year old, likely in a romantic sexual relationship with this person. Likely we already know that she is sexually active because she's already had one termination with another boy that was too old for her. Okay. This is happening, and it's all done because Jennifer allows it to happen and sometimes probably perpetuates it, okay? This guy, this boy, why is he not in jail right now? Why? If we're gonna, if we're gonna go after James Charles, for, James Charles for, for texting TikTok minors, he didn't even act on it. He just it was inappropriate, okay? And David Dobrik and all these other people who have done this type of thing, they get canceled. And... <laughs> Why is this okay? Why? Um, you know, wow. whatever. I felt like I was obligated to tell Mason the truth and, and you know, tell him what happened. Danielle has still not told Mason her age. Um, Mason knows, and it doesn't matter, Mason. It doesn't matter if she lied to you about her age. It doesn't matter. It's still statutory R. It still is. She could lie to you all day long. If you don't have proof, you need to get proof. Your parents need to step in. You need to get your own attorneys. You need to start stepping up and figuring out. You know her age because the internet has exploded with this type of story. All you have to do is Google it. You know these people live in that world. He knows her age, everybody. And again, even if he didn't know it, it still stands. Ignorance is not an excuse to break the law. And, you know, that's where I, I informed Mason. And then Danielle continues to call me and says she's coming to Nashville to surprise Mason. Um, she arrived in Nashville with Jen and it was very strange to say the least. I felt rather disrespected and very uncomfortable as my house was completely under construction for renovations. And I felt isolated in my own home. And it was strange for Jen to, to be there. Um, it, was, it was just strange in general. These people are wealthy. 
go get a hotel or an Airbnb. They're actually quite, you know, quite quaint. Some of them are really, really, really nice, and they're not that expensive. Why do these people do this? This is my space. Okay, I know we're, pro we're professional, whatever, working together. Go get your own damn space. Go to a hotel. You are freaking rich. Don't stay in my shit. But she really wanted to surprise Mason. Um, and I had made a dinner reservations while they were in town. We go to the mall and I discover that Danielle had lied to me about being signed to Michelle Paramore. Um, and she actually had management at this time and that she could not sign with me. Um, oh, which damn. clearly she had, she had lied to me about this and had coerced me into paying for everything in anticipation of us working together. Obviously, I would not have paid for, you know, distribution and all of these other, you know, projects, assuming that we were not able to have a working relation. Sorry, dude. It's kind of on you. I guess that's how Hollywood works, but dude, get shit signed before you do it. But I guess this is how it works, right? You gotta, you gotta wine and dine them and then they'll take advantage of this. I guess this is how, like, if you guys have ever seen those shows like Baller, Entourage and shit, this is kind of how Hollywood works. I get it, but it's your own fault. It, it was my birthday around that time, so I think he had just gotten that as like a birthday gift, as okay. well as saying thank you for getting him off of a charge and, and you know paying for the legal fees and everything else involved with that. Um, Again, I gotta go back to that. How is it that you can take a butter knife, <laughs> a butter knife on an airplane, and just get away with? Because a lawyer, how does that just go away? I get that you're wealthy, but a lawyer can just say like, how does it work legally? Oh yeah, we got money, so we're gonna what? How? If I did that, I would be charged. How do I, how do you just get off? Upset and makes her friend Kano post a TikTok that says managers, along the lines of like managers stealing my best friend's boyfriend, referring to me taking Mason from Danielle. These people make millions of dollars. Look at this shit. Where are your parents? Your parents need to kick your ass. Your pa everybody's parents are failing them in the TikTok world. Every single young influencer on the internet that has that is unchecked, every single one of their parents needs to be put in jail. Which is not true, and we have no romantic relationship at all. Um, I instantly call Kano, and um, I've actually recorded the whole phone call. Mm -hmm. um, this and guy knows him what's shit. going on, as well as how I felt strange by Danielle and and, and Jen, and, and felt very used and not okay. Yeah. Legit, I was like, ha ha, should I do this? It'd be funny. And then he was like, yeah, do it. It's fun. And I said, okay, cool. Um, the whole situation started to make me feel really un This guy sounds like he needs to go hang out with adults and stop hanging out with teenagers. Okay, I, th I still think he's got important things to say. But dude, what do you expect when you're literally hanging out with teenager influencers? They don't know shit about anything. Teenagers are assholes. Uncomfortable because that video was kind of meant to like shame Mason. Um, for the record, Danielle is not pansexual. She says she's pansexual all the time. Um, she has said the words that she would never date a girl and said multiple times that she would never date Mason or anyone else that was bi, um, which is offensive. Guy's dropping shit without saying allegedly at all, so he likely has proof of all this stuff. And we all know that people come out, ah, oh, I'm pansexual, and they all say these things because it's like, if you guys don't understand the idea of, of identity culture and stuff like that's going on in the world right now, a lot of people are now doing it because it's the attention getter thing. And that is actually quite scary. I want to point out that there are real people struggling with those types of identity issues. And then there are people that come in the, that come in and be like, oh yeah, I'm this too. And they have no business being a part of that world. And Danielle Cohn and all these other people who do it, it's utter bullshit. Put someone that you love in that position. Um, so. This is weird. I'm, I'm a little bit weirded out. Like, I, okay. Now it's getting a little bit high school-y. So let's get to the other shit. Okay. Instantly they freak out and say that I've stolen the YouTube account, um, which is, is not possible. Danielle actually added me as an owner to her YouTube channel. Uh, Guy showing up with receipts, yo. Who are the owners? 
Danny Cohn is the primary owner. Angela Rylander. Who is Angela Rylander? Matt Dugan, Vanessa Collab Inc. Who are these people? Like how many people are behind this one teenager? Isn't it inc isn't it crazy the amount of adults that will take advantage of a kid just for money? Isn't that, that nuts? Um, she said that I forged her signature. I did not forge her signature. Danielle, when we created the first song, um, I'm Done, actually created her account with our label and our partnership with Vidya and connected her YouTube account and signed the agreement, which actually has the IP address to the Calabasas house. Um, so shit, man, this, <laughs> this guy will be the downfall of Jennifer Cohn and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, and the, a channel that's connected to this platform. Well, obviously she connected the platform to the channel herself. That's how we released I'm done and her other music videos. Uh, Let's stop here. I, I'm going to chime in here for a second. As somebody who was in the music industry for a little while, I'm not saying I was successful, you know, to a to a degree. I was a Canadian musician, so it was a little bit different. What is stopping these content creators who have tons of money from just hiring a producer to write the song, ghostwrite it, whatever? Hire a freaking video editor and a, and a filmographer to make this video and just release it yourself. Why do they rely on all these crazy people to do everything? You could do it your damn self. It's so easy to release music now and put out shitty music videos. It's so easy to do it, but rich people just don't want to do any work anymore. I just, that's my rant on music. Just do it yourself. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's laughable to hear that she says I stole her account when uh, she assigned me. I'm going to start writing <laughs> shitty ass pop music for TikTok stars. There's money in it and it's really easy to write and it's shit. I'm doing it. She has yet to withdraw even any existing earnings from I'm Done or her other music video. It's like $250. Okay. What is it? Why is this? Um, why does this matter? $250 to people who make millions of dollars? What does that matter? That's nothing for them. That's a freaking night out at a sushi. That's not even, no, sorry. That's like the tip at a sushi restaurant they go to. Uh, and the way AdSense works is it pays out to that account. Um, and the way our relationship with video works, it pays out to that account so that there's no employees touching the funds. It goes to a holding account, mm -hmm. which I've attached screenshots here. Um, and Danielle has full access to that and only access to that. I can't go in there and withdraw her money. It sits there until she gets it. So she claims I stole her money, but that's literally impossible to do. Also, rich people are stupid. So many rich people, specifically on YouTube, have probably don't even realize that they probably have money sitting in place they don't even know. That's how rich these people are. Could probably be hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting somewhere. They have no idea it's there. Isn't that crazy? She claims that I forged her name, which is impossible to do. She connected her YouTube channel and agreed to the terms and conditions. She said I stole her account. Again, impossible to do. Mm -hmm. um, He's right. After this, I start to get emails from um, brands and, and partners with us who are like, you know, what's going on. Um, all to say, Jin has reached out to another MCN and her management. MCN, everybody, if you're wondering, is a multi-channel network, right? They are the talent holdings for like, there's a, like we agency, I talk about them a lot. They are a talent agency, a, you know, an MCN for family vloggers. Like just, that's all they do is they just take care of family vloggers. And they have YouTube managers and they have all these people connected and they teach people how to make more money. They get them brand deals. MCNs are kind of a big deal if you're big. Paramore and Michelle Paramore and said that I um, am in violation and I was like no I, this is what she asked us to do this is news to me um, and I was very confused to say the least um, Danielle I had texted multiple times through this to try to get some some clarity she refused to respond to me for whatever reason um, and ultimately that that forced me to be in a very delicate situation with a lot of partners we worked with for mm -hmm. years um, I had to refund a brand deal that Danielle had was supposed to do two thousand dollars committed to do agreed to do and um, Wouldn't even respond to me to film the video needed. She doesn't understand, you know, quite like all of that stuff like taking brand deals and then Saying yeah, I'm gonna do this, but then puts it all on me um, So when they come back, they don't come back and yell at her. They'll come back and yell at me because she's like, yeah, I'll do it. You're a manager. It's hard to get her to do stuff. Like, you can't, the thing with Danny is you can't tell her what to do. She's going to do it when she wants and at her time. So brands tell her, hey, I need this in a week, and she won't get it done. She'll wait like two weeks, three weeks. 
and then they're coming at me yelling at me and well can you make her do it so yeah. oh my god gotta be kidding me taking on brands can be a little hard if it's something that she doesn't look at the whole contract first so I had to refund that brand. I had a Netflix offer in the works um, and she oh, refused to respond to that. Partners that I've worked with for years, um, she refused to promote her music or her merch. Um, Would you promote that shit, dude? Have you seen her music videos? No. It's a no for me. I could get she's trying to be this pop star or whatever and they all try to do this, but none of them have ability. They have ability. I don't know. None of them have any abilities at all. Daniel Cohn's only ability is to dress like her mother puts her in these crazy outfits. She's an influencer of sex. She's a sex influencer. She's like, she dresses inappropriately. That is all she does. There's no talent. She has no talent. Literally, her talent is her mom putting her in bikinis. Since legal fees, I stopped his arrest in California. I helped him out of a deal when he was being extorted six hours prior to his letter. I had gone above, above wow. and beyond, so this was very blindsided. Extorted. I hope he expounds on that. Extorted how? Somebody has proof of something he did illegal that could put him in jail? Perhaps? With a minor, perhaps? Why doesn't he expound on it? To say the least, um, every time I asked him and, and informed him that my legal team told him to stop any romantic or sexual relationship. He's alluding to it here. Um, he would get backlash being like, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe I can ask her about her real age to which I had no it information other than that. Um, and it became a situation where I could not be in between two parties where Mason is knowingly committing a crime, um, by being with Danielle, who is a minor and Danielle using my business relationship for her pure advantage and for her financial gain. Why? Okay, Michael, I get what you're trying to say here. And you, you've got a business to run. You've got a reputation to protect. If you knew that they were doing something illegal, why don't you call? You seem to have some receipts and some proof. What is it about this world where they just like, they'll use it to tear down someone else, and they should because it's disgusting, but they won't actually do anything about it legally, like do the thing that needs to be done, which is get the police involved. How many cases CPS? Like 30? I don't get it. We can see in videos alone who Daniel Cohen's pregnant by, and CPS has no legal grounds? None? Man, this whole world has failed this little girl. It's my belief that she's had him text current clients of mine being like, don't work with Michael, listen to Danny, Danny's right, um, and Holy shit. because of that. Just want to say you guys made your bed, you lie in it. Don't work with teenagers. And it, again, I don't even think it's Danielle doing that. Maybe she is because she's a teenager and she's an asshole like a lot of teenagers. This is Jennifer too. This is all Jennifer because whose money is at stake here in the end? Jennifer's money is at stake. When Danny turns 18 in three years, Jennifer is going to be living in a van down by the river. There are going to be lawsuits. Daniel Cohn is going to sue her mother into oblivion. The people around they're going to sue her into oblivion. Danielle is going to get sued into oblivion. Th again, the only person that's going to suffer in the end is Danielle anyway, but Jennifer is going to live in a box soon and she deserves to. And that box should be prison. See what I did there? It's now affecting my business. I did nothing but try to help her. I was literally trying to get her paid for her music videos that she never got paid. Let's be real. You were trying to help her so that you could sign her. We know we get, it. I mean, and that's business, but he, again, he didn't do these things out of the, you know, out of the charity of his heart, <laughs> right? He was trying to schmooze her into a contract. I cannot stay silent anymore and listen to what people say when it's not true. Um, I have a right to defend my name and I plan to. What? Okay. I get what he's doing. This is his platform. This is how he's going to get his justice. Sounds like he's got attorneys. Why not just sue the living shit out of them? And I have reached out to Jen and Danny and Mason with um, legal proceedings. Okay. My attorneys reached out multiple times. Perfect. Again, <laughs> no response. I think the same should be done. Danielle, there are consequences to your actions. Jen, there are consequences to your actions. Oh, okay. Well, that's the end of the video. I'm not going to show you the other video. We're going to do that another day this week because this, this story is going to blow up. Um, Daniel Cohen did, re did did a response video, and it's 
it's what you think it's going to be. It's shit, okay? Mason is a guy, like, there's all this heated drama. I get what's going on with the drama side of it. We can't miss that fact that this Mason backed out of contract, and this guy's like, hey, I'm going to spill all the tea now. And I get it. That's how this world works. But it's beneficial to us in this, what we're doing here. Because we get a glimpse into the shit we already knew was happening, but now we have it corroborated. Okay? Daniel Cohn, and I will say this now, and I'll say this forever, needs to be out of the care of her biological mother and put into the system. The system actually would be better for Daniel Cohn. I'm not even kidding. And a lot of people are like, no, it's not. You don't think so? Go look at Daniel Cohn's Instagram and tell me, and her YouTube, and tell me you think all that is okay. And the, sh the world that they're living in here, you tell me that you think that's okay. The world where they're bringing in adult males to sleep with a teenage girl and allowing it to happen and either lying to them or those adult males just don't care. There are going to be people that are going to end up in jail. And I hope it's Jennifer, but it's likely going to be a few boys, men, adult males who are likely going to be charged. Again, Jennifer has a lot of dirt on some people and we know it. Because otherwise, how does this shit not explode and blow up? This guy's willing to spill the tea. Do you know how much more tea is going to be out there from all the exes? There's got to be NDAs. There's got to be lawyers involved in all this shit. And there's a ton of parents involved in all this. This is a disgusting, disgusting factory of disgustingness on YouTube. And YouTube allows it. YouTube makes money on it. Okay? This world, Daniel Piper, there's a Daniel Cohn, Piper, Raquel, Everly LeBrant, all these, there's a bunch of them too. There's not, that's not, there's a bunch of them. Okay. And nobody seems to care. Nobody wants to protect these children. And it got, and now it's, too, it's again, I will say it again. Daniel Cohn is too, too far gone. There's no turning back for her. It, she's gone. Her mother has got the reins on her. And when shit hits the fan, when she's 18 in three years, you guys are going to see it. And everybody keeps saying, ah, and her fans will go in the thing, and you, we hate you, and you're lying, and all this stuff. This person, Pen A, writes, I hope you all know this isn't just drama. Danielle is a, ch is a child being abused, and this is serious. And her fans are too young and blind to see it. Yes. I couldn't say it more perfectly. Her fans, and they have people that will expect, no person in their right mind, in their right mind, thinks what's going on with Daniel Cohn is okay. Teenagers do, because they are influenced and they're on her side. That's the problem, you know what I'm saying? Teenagers are influenced. And I've got videos on my channel about this with Virginia, a, a family friend that was there from the beginning, who said all this a while ago. Why is nobody listening? Why does CPS do nothing? More CPS, everybody. More CPS intensifies. Call them more. Call them more, and we gotta find out legally how we can protect these kids, because clearly CPS can't do shit. Nobody's protecting these kids. There are nothing to help them. Nothing. The government's hands are tied, apparently. Okay? So we need to figure out how to fix this so that there's not another Daniel Cohn coming because you know there's five in the wings right now waiting. There are parents just salivating at their nine-year-old daughter. Can't wait to get them in inappropriate clothing and put them on YouTube and make money. There are there are fan, there are are Instagram accounts out there right now. One of them is uh, Casey Stauffer. Okay? Go look at hers. She puts her kid in like lacy underwear and shit like that. And this is a toddler. There are people salivating at the millions they're going to make exploiting their children. We need to stop this. And my offer stands. If anybody is out there and I, someone said, sent me something that someone was trying to work on something, it's not happening. We have to start our own nonprofit. It has to be in the US because that's how you lobby governments. Who is with me? I'm willing to do what I can. We need a lot of people. We need smarter people than I. So please, help me help these people. This is bullshit. Jennifer should be in jail. 100%. And Michael, if you're watching this, okay, and all these people who help her, Paramore, Michelle Paramore, whatever, you people are just as bad because you make money and take advantage of these teenagers too. It's not just to Jennifer. There's a whole team, people lined up with their hands out for the money to take advantage of this girl. They all know her age too. Okay? There's a whole team of people behind this shit. We need to call out these people, these, these managers, and these people who are behind the scenes. They need to be brought to light, too. We need to shame all of them. This shit's getting real. Take a deep breath, please. Take another one. This is a big deal, everybody. This is something we can't keep ignoring. This is a big, big deal. Okay? If you follow me on Instagram, that helps my voice grow. If you follow me on Twitter, that helps my voice grow. If you follow me on Facebook, 
sort of helps my voice grow. But if you subscribe here, like, hit the bell, that actually really, really helps. Please consider subscribing. That is how you help this. And that is why you are so valuable. You are here listening. You are here outraged with me and you are willing to, to go the extra mile. I know a lot of you guys are willing to do it by spreading the word, talking about it with people in your circles, okay? But we need to, the time for talk is almost at an end, okay? We can just, we can snark and shame people to a degree, but at some point it really doesn't do that much except for bring awareness. But that, that time is slowly approaching where we actually need to put the freaking balls to the wall and make something happen, okay? Because there is going to be something bad and you know it's coming down the pike and it's coming soon. And I'm scared of what that thing's gonna be. Shit, sorry about the sad ending. But it's important. I'll see you tomorrow.